I'm pronouncing that correct. Euthanasia. I do want to say a disclaimer that this is physician assisted, medication assisted by a licensed doctor of dying. This is not suicide or self-inflicted death. Self-euthanasia is also a thing. This is not what I'm speaking of. I want to talk about death with dignity. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, it's also called euthanasia. And the reason why I want to talk about this is, is because it's coming up to me often. Probably about three times within the last month, I've heard this term. And one key similarity that I've noticed is that everyone who asks about this type of physician assisted death were baby boomers. Like y'all, we have to love the baby boomers, right? Now, if you're a healthcare OG like myself, you probably already have noticed the differences between the baby boomers and their parents. I remember when we first started seeing the increase of baby boomers on hospice care, and I was like, oh, these are not the same people. I feel like, in my personal opinion, their parents were more doing things by the book, following the rules, following politics and the government, and this is how you're supposed to do it, and this is it. You don't do it no other way. They were not rule breakers, not the baby boomers. They're different. If I had to describe a baby boomer, they're definitely someone who's very independent. They've, they've worked very hard for what they have. And there's almost like a sense of entitlement that, that they do deserve, in my opinion. Very strong, hard workers. And I'm not saying that their parents weren't, but I feel like the generation before was just, again, more of, of the rule follower. And the baby boomer is like, no, I worked for that. That's mine. Um, just some things that I've noticed. Different group, different generation, but this is where we are. And again, I just find it very interesting that every patient that has mentioned euthanasia or death with dignity, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Asia, euthanasia. Everyone has been a baby boomer. And it's like, let's get into that. Let's talk about it. What really stood out to me, y'all, was a patient who said she could remember when her kids were little and they had a, a pet, a dog, who had cancer. And it broke her and her family's heart to see her dog suffer. She lost her ability to walk. She was incontinent. She was dying. She was in pain. But they were able to give her the gift, is what she used, the gift to have a peaceful passing by a licensed veterinarian, someone who was skilled. And if you have a belief, like she said, you know where she's going and she's no longer suffering. She no longer suffered. And hearing that story hit different for me. I never thought about it like that. Now, of course, this is a very controversial subject, and I'm not here to say my opinion. I live in Missouri, and that's not something that we can practice here, but I do want to provide you all with the nine states where it is legal, just in case this is something that you're thinking about. I will also encourage going on Facebook. There's many Facebook groups that support this type of practice as well. But when when she put it in, a per, in perspective that we we allow our pets, she said we allow our pets to die better than us humans. Never heard it that way. Here are the nine states. If you all have any questions, please leave a comment. This will definitely not be my last time speaking about this subject, um, especially if it keeps coming up. I think it's just very interesting. Also a service that you have to qualify for. There are certain criteria and regulations per state that you have to meet before you qualify for this type of 
physician assisted death with dignity process. And I am going to make a video uh, to discuss the regulations and the must haves to have this type of physician assisted passing. Stay tuned for that. And I hope this video was helpful.